What's happening, Hardscapers? This is episode 54 of the How to Hardscape podcast, where we talk to you about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And today we're joined by Chris Procopio, Director of Sales for WaySafe, a product that is designed to help you measure tongue weight. And we talk about this product and many factors that affect trailer safety. So be sure to listen all the way to the end. And without further ado, here's our interview with Chris. Today, I am joined by Chris Procopio. He's the director of sales of WaySafe, and there he's here to talk with us about trailer safety and how WaySafe can help with that. Chris, thank you so much for joining me here. Oh, thank you, Mike. It's uh, it's good to be on to get to talk to you and and all of course all your subscribers. Absolutely, and we're happy to have WaySafe on the show to talk with this a very important subject for anybody in the hardscape industry. So let's just get started, Chris, by getting to learn a little bit more about yourself, how you got into this working for WaySafe, and maybe we can transition towards learning a little bit about how WaySafe got started. Well, perfect. So, so my background is actually in, in operations and basically building out organizations. Um, so my, my background is I went to Brigham Young University and was one of the first graduates from their supply chain operations degree program. So basically, tinkering is what I do. Uh, so my background is just coming into a business and, and basically finding ways to make that business better. Within my career, my resume, I've actually had considerable sales experience because um, at a young age, I learned you have to learn how to talk to people if you want to get anything in motion, whether it's on the operation side, whether it's at the revenue generation side. As I was, I was, I was working in the industry, um, I was actually an unaffiliated. I actually worked a lot in, in residential sales, um, working with, with companies such as, as Vivid Smart Homes, working with companies such as Apex, which is down in Utah. Uh, Brandon Doman actually approached me and asked me to build out a, a sales team for him uh, with WaySafe. I was the second hire right after the engineer that came on. Uh, to work with the company, Kevin McAllister, who was the initial inventor of the WaySafe. Brandon Doman is the current CEO and president of the company and was Kevin McAllister's business partner for, for several years. Um, so, th- so they brought me on and, and, and we brought on a couple sales guys with us. And well, long story short, within the past four years, we went from being a, a small niche product in the aluminum towing industry until today, where we're actually the largest uh, manufacturer in the United States with aluminum adjustable ball mounts. Amazing. That's incredible. And you were talking a little bit uh, before we got on this interview about, uh, you know, how WaySafe kind of came to be. Can you give our audience a little bit of a background about what is WaySafe? What is this product that you guys offer? And maybe a little bit of background about how it, it came to be? Perfect. So the whole story wrapped up, it comes down to towing peace of mind. And that until today is, is our catchphrase here at the company. So, so Kevin McAllister, the inventor of the WaySafe, uh, who, you know, the brainchild is his, you know, the hydraulic gauge tongue weight scale, which is built into all of our ball mounts. So he has been an engineer for 30 years. He actually passed away from, from cancer in 2017. Um, but he did leave a large footprint here in Utah, and, and we're doing our best to live up to his name. But so his background is he's been engineering various products for a wide range of companies for, for over 30 years. And one day, it, this guy owned, you know, three different trucks from, you know, a, a Chevy, a half ton to a two F-350 Super Duties. And he probably owned a, a dozen different trailers that he was towing between. And so one problem that he ran into is, you know, the second you own a trailer or a truck, you got, you got everyone in the neighborhood coming over asking to borrow, whether they're moving, buying a new fridge from, from wherever it might be. And depending on what truck setup they have, what trailer they set up they have, and what, whatever they're loading into that trailer, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a big risk. I mean, they have to know exactly how they're measuring that trailer, whether they have too much weight up front, too much weight in the back. Evan's worried about his own personal liability, about having his neighbor next door, or even his son, you know, take his half ton versus his full ton versus his 12 foot utility trailer. He was 32 foot, you know, cargo trailer that he has enclosed trailer, excuse me. And so what he decided to start looking for was, was products that would allow him to know whether his trailer and vehicle were properly loaded to kind of give him that own peace of mind, whether his neighbor next door, or his son is properly moving, whatever it might be. And to his surprise, he couldn't find a single product out there that would allow him easily to know if his trailer was properly loaded or not. And the engineer that he, that he was, he sat down, 
came up with the idea of putting a gauge, a hydraulic gauge directly into the ball mount itself that gives you an instantaneous readout of that load. So within moments of loading your trailer, you know if you've done it right or not. And back in 2014, he reached out to Brandon Doman, the current president and CEO of the company. And he said, hey, I'd love to get together. I have this great product idea. There's nothing in the industry that competes against it, both in strength and, and utility. And they sat together and, and that's when Wasted was started in 2014. They, they spent uh, $90,000 on a CNC mill and some aluminum. And they started milling out these adjustable ball mounts. And we've gone from making these in batches of uh, five to 12 a day to now we literally make hundreds of ball mounts a day. We sell thousands a month uh, and, and tens of thousands of these units every year. That's incredible. And just thinking about the possibilities for us in our industry or any industry that's carrying around a trailer, uh, for a business owner, for somebody that's been loading up trailers, hauling trailers for some time now, they might be able to eyeball it and, and feel safe with the tongue weight. But for their employees, this is where I see the, the real value as well as the business owner. For the employees that come on and it may be their first time ever hauling a trailer, uh, they this I see this coming into so much use. So can we talk a little bit about tongue weight? What is tongue weight? Uh, and how does WaySafe exactly help us with this tongue weight? Perfect. So, so what tongue weight is, so if I have a trailer that's fully loaded, let's say it's 12,000 pounds, and I connect it to the, the adjustable ball mount that's hanging down from behind my truck. So you have your, your Chevy half ton, you have your ball, you have your receiver hitch on the back, whether it's an adjustable ball mount or a fixed height, once you take the trailer coupler and you attach it to that ball mount on the back of your truck, there is some force, some vertical force coming down on that ball mount itself. So that trailer might weigh 12,000 pounds, but you might have anywhere from zero and or a negative weight, which means the trailer is so back heavy, it's actually pulling up on that ball on the back of your truck, or you could have anywhere up to, to 30% of your total trailer weight pushing down on that ball if that cargo weight is too far forward on that trailer. So that's, that's what tongue weight is. It's the amount of vertical force being applied to that ball mount on the back of that truck with that downward force that's being applied to that tow ball. So then when it comes to having an improperly loaded trailer, say the tongue weight is too heavy or the there, like you said, it's, it's so back heavy that it's putting upward force on it. What kind of risk do each of these scenarios uh, pose to us hauling trailers? Perfect. So the, the most well-known is trailer sway. So, so what that is, is basically when you have too much of your load towards the back of your trailer, which means you have less than 10% of your gross trailer weight, which means if I have a, a 10,000 pound trailer, I need to have at least 1,000 pounds there on the ball mount, 1,000 pounds of tongue weight. If I have less than that, that means that there's too much weight on the back of the trailer. And what that actually causes uh, us to do with that truck and trailer is to get that sway. And most people have at least experienced once in their life. I noticed the last time I moved, I fell victim to it. And yes, that's why I was working at WaySafe is the second you get on that highway, you hit about 45 miles an hour. You start feeling that trailer behind you go side to side on. You. It's actually the number one cause of trailer related fatalities in the United States on the United States highway system is when people are getting on those uh, getting on those highways, they hit 45 miles an hour, they start getting that tilt. And probably the most dangerous thing that happens once someone starts feeling that sway is they apply that brake. So those oscillations, those, those vibrations caused from that trailer going side by side actually get compounded when the, when the driver of that truck actually applies the brake. It's, we get a little bit into physics if you'd like, but... <laughs> So what we do is way safe is having that tongue weight scale. So in the slider itself, the portion that goes up and down on that drawbar that's inserted into the receiver of the truck, we actually have a hydraulic gauge built into it with that ball. So as that coupler is placed on that ball, that ball pushes down on a little plunger we have built in, which pressurizes a hydraulic bed of oil, which reads out on an easy to read gauge. So I can see exactly how much weight I have there on the tongue. So if I have a 10,000 pound trailer and I have all my fridge and my washer and dryer and everything heavy in the, in the back of the trailer and just my mattress up front, I can come up and see, oh, 10,000 pound trailer, I only have 300 pounds of tongue weight. 
and right so you can move your your load forward or swap up your load a bit move some of that gravel up forward move that that backhoe forward on the trailer a little bit in order to adjust that weight to avoid that tongue weight but the funny thing is because so many people in the industry are aware of trailer swing because everybody has experienced it what the average tow in the united states tend to do is actually overload the front of the trailer so what happens, so the opposing view, if instead of having that 10 to 15% tongue weight right there on that ball, the average truck and trailer combo out in the United States highway is actually pushing 20, 25% because we're so afraid to have a backloaded trailer, we tend to move everything up to the front. So what happens if you have too much weight on the front of the trailer is we call it jackknifing. Right, there's so much weight on the front of the trailer, it's actually pushing down the haunches, the rear haunches of that truck so what that does is it lifts the front axle of the truck. So what, what, what that causes is, of course, less performance because we now have less weight on that front axle of the truck because there's so much tongue weight on the back of the truck. What that does is so you have less ability to steer your load. And I don't know, there's, there's many commercial loaders here, but so I've, I've towed quite a few dump trailers in the day, and I know when I have too much tongue weight, I, I feel like I'm barely able to turn when I have this, this 21,000 pound dump trailer behind me fully loaded. So not only less, uh, less ability to uh, steer, you have less ability to brake. At night, you have less visibility because now your headlights are actually up in the air instead of on the road in front of you where you need them. Um, on the rear of the vehicle, when you have so much tongue weight, that 20, 25%, it's actually putting excess wear and tear on the rear axle of your truck. It's shredding through tires a lot more quickly. And because there's so much weight in the back of the truck, reducing that weight on the front axle, it actually increases the amount of slip you have on that front axle, which means it reduces your fuel economy by actually having too much tongue weight right there. So not only does having that gauge, that hydraulic gauge built in the slider, you being able to see that instantaneous readout, not only does it allow you to know when you need to put more weight to the front of the trailer, it gives our customers, both commercial and residential, it gives them the confidence to be able to move some of that weight towards the back of the trailer so they can get back to that 10 to 15% without the fear of, a, uh, of experiencing trailer sway on the highway, without the fear of having to you know, worry about this trailer flipping out on them over in Wyoming when that, when that blast of wind hits them in the side. I love this product. I love this idea and this concept. And when it comes to loading a trailer safely, obviously, if you're loading up like a single piece of equipment, it's pretty fixed about, uh, you know, getting that 10 to 15 percent on the weight of your tongue. But if you're loading up something like gravel, something a little bit more fluid, what's a good proportion of, you know, loading that trailer safely, that 10 to 15% on the tongue weight? Does the rest go over our, our axles on the, the butt end? Where, where should we be loading this to ensure that our trailers be lo being loaded safely? So on a, on a single axle trailer, the main goal is to keep the, the center of gravity right there over that, right over that single axle. If it's a dual axle, you want to keep it right there between the two axles. If it's a tri-axle, you want to keep it right there in the center axle. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're placing the weight where the trailer has been reinforced and strengthened to where that weight is intended to go. So what happens if we place that weight too forward of the axle, that's where we start experiencing too much tongue weight. When you have it too behind the axle, too, that center of gravity too far behind the axle, that's where you have too little. So a, a lot of towers out there that are pretty darn good at eyeballing their tongue weight, what they understand is the importance and of, of placing that load properly on the trailer, which, which is what we try to do centered over that axle where, where the trailer has been reinforced for that. Where the tongue weight scale is of, of importance is of those variable loads. Like in the farming community, they absolutely love, or the, the, the heavy commercial, the heavy industry where we're towing backhoes, we're, we're towing uh, front loaders, we're towing this heavy equipment that, that tends not to be that tends not to have their weight evenly distributed through this machinery, right? You have your big old engine block in the front or in the back, and then you have the, the backhoe bucket up front, right? So what this allows us to do is as they're driving that, that industrial vehicle under their trailer, they can actually look at the gauge and instead of having to rely and, and try to guess how that weight's distributed over the axle, it can actually look at that tongue weight gauge and see right when they're at that 10 to 15%. 
So that tongue weight gauge along with positioning over those axles is, is, is honestly the safest way to load that trailer so you can go confidently having that towing piece of mind, knowing that you're not going to experience either that jackknifing or that trailer sway. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about when that trailer is being loaded, uh, whether it is you are uh, on that piece of equipment loading up the trailer or you're watching somebody dumping gravel into your trailer, do we have to be right at that ball mount and reading the gauge as it's being loaded? Or does it hook up to our phone somehow that we can uh, see the weight being loaded as it's you know going on? So the, the Bluetooth aspect is something we've had and worked for years. Um, as far as release dates and everything, not yet. So currently it is just read out on the gauge, uh, but hopefully coming soon, we're going to have some products that's going to be able to integrate with your phone, with your vehicle, uh, with the entire environment, or try the, the entire ecosystem we're trying to create around these product lines. So yes, I mean, Mike, you're a bit of a fortune teller there. So eventually you will have it on your phone, but currently it is on, on that gauge. Awesome. That sounds so cool. And how about choosing a ball mount for your hitch? What what are we looking at when we're getting into, okay, we want to buy a WaySafe product. What do we need to look at when choosing the right ball mount for our hitch? First and foremost, our number one returns across the industry, number one reason for returns is people ordering a ball mount that doesn't fit the receiver size. So the number one thing is please go out to your vehicle, whether it's your fleet of trucks for a commercial customer, or if it's just your, your, your truck you have parked outside your house, and just take a roll and just measure that receiver. Some guidelines for most people is all half-ton trucks, F-150, Chevy 1500, your Dodge Rebel 1500 with that 5.7 liter. All of those have a two-inch receiver. None of them have a two-and-a-half-inch. None of them have a – well, I mean, they're all straight two-inch receivers. Um, if it's a three-quarter ton, a full-ton truck, um, those tend to have a two-and-a-half-inch receiver of those that are manufactured after 2008. Any truck produced before 2008, they all have a two-inch receiver. But, and I can give you, I mean, there's a lot of exceptions to these rules. There's a lot of manufacturers that kind of went off a of wild hair. So the safest way to know which size receiver you need for your truck is just get your tape measure walk back there, remove any reducers that you might have in there in the receiver, and then just measure it. That's going to guarantee you to avoid the reason for 90% of the returns that we see. So the second way to measure, and this is, is probably the most debated, is the size of the drop or how far down do you want this adjustable ball mount to be hanging from the receiver itself. So Department of Transportation, the DOT, needs, requires that you have 11 inches of clearance from the the, the furthest down point of the ball mount to the asphalt itself. So for our way safe design, our, our way safe ball mounts with the gauge built in, it's a mono ball system. So it only has a single ball that is sticking from the top. It doesn't have that excess ball hanging off the bottom. So what that means is you only have to measure from the bottom of the slider portion or the bottom of the draw bar down to the asphalt in order to obtain that 11 inch. If you buy one of our 180 hitches or one of our competitor dual ball systems or even one of those tri ball systems out there, you have to measure from the bottom of the drop, from the bottom of that toe ball, that toe ball that's hanging down to the lowest point, all the way down to the asphalt. So that secondary ball that's hanging down south of the slider tends to be on average anywhere from, from two to three and a half inches. So which means if I have an eight inch drop, but I have a 180 hitch product by WaySafe where I have one of our competitor dual ball systems. If it's an eight inch drop, I now have to add that additional three inches of loss provided by that secondary ball hanging down. So if I'm driving a standard half ton, let's say I'm driving a Ford F-150, uh, standard with, let's say I got those 20 inch wheels, um, I'll have about 21 inches of clearance from the bottom of that receiver to the asphalt, which means the maximum size drop that I can have is 10 inches. And that'll leave me with about 11 inches of clearance. Uh, cosmetically, most people prefer to be sitting around 13 inches is what they feel looks best. And in my personal opinion, looks best cosmetically for the truck. And at the end of the day, once you have that tongue weight on there, your truck is going to squat a bit, reducing that anyway. So about 13 inches of where you want to aim. And on a standard F-150 with 21 inches of clearance from the bottom of that receiver to the asphalt on the ground. Um, if I have 21 inches, I know I'm going to want at least 13 inches of clearance. So I know the drop size I'm going to want is that eight inches. If I'm driving, uh, you know, with the 16 inch wheels, a lot shorter truck, and I only have 18 inches of clearance, 
Well, the deepest drop I'm going to want is about a six inch drop, right? Because we're going to take that 18 inches of clearance minus that 13 sits me at about five inches. So that six inch drop is where I'm going to want to sit. Now you guys over there at Waysafe also have an adjustable ball mount. Is this where this kind of plays in where you can kind of adjust it, but also with the coupler of your trailer, you know, where do you want that sitting in terms of, uh, you know, being level with your, your ball mount or maybe being a little bit higher so that when it is loaded, it is level when it's loaded. How, how do you, how does that all play into this? Excellent question. So this one is a little variable because it depends on the stiffness of the springs. Obviously, a, a three-quarter ton has a lot more stiff suspension than a half ton, which means with the same amount of ton weight, your half ton's going to squat a whole heck of a lot more than your full ton truck. So it, it, that that kind of comes down to how well do you know your truck. So what I try to do when I when I'm towing one of my half ton truck is I always try to aim a little higher. So the goal of all of this is we want that trailer to be perpendicular with the ground itself, right? So the front of the trailer to the rear of the trailer, we want to make sure that is completely perpendicular to the ground. And that's how we know it's, it's properly loaded. It's that straight line right to the rear of your truck. And that's where those adjustable ball mounts are, are, are pretty darn necessary because it allows you to adjust the height of that coupler without having to adjust the weight at all. And that's actually an excellent way to adjust the tongue weight by adjust, uh, adjusting the angle of attack on that trailer itself. So what I would recommend is usually when you're first loading your trailer is try to aim, if let's say uh, six inches down on a 10 inch drop, it's pretty, perp- it, it's pretty flat. I always try to aim about one or two inches above that. So once that trailer is fully loaded, especially if we're, we're loading up our backhoe or anything like that, by the time that haunch on the back of that, that half ton truck is there, it's going to be a pretty perpendicular trailer with the ground itself. And so it, 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 it's kind of a, a play by ear by trying to see exactly uh, we need to load this trailer. But, you know, every, every truck and trailer, it's kind of its own beast. Absolutely. And coming down to this, uh, you guys offer aluminum and steel. What is the benefits, drawbacks to either one? What, what should we be going with? Gosh darn it. My personal preference is aluminum. The main reason we have steel available to customers is we have our good old boy that that believes in steel. Steel is the way to go. And there are some reasons for that. So I'll give you the positive on the steel first, and then I'll go into the long, long list of why aluminum is just superior in, in, in many of the applications that we've seen it used. Steel does have the better fatigue life, which means if I'm going to tow, if I'm going to be maxing out this adjustable ball mount day after day, for example, our two-inch ball mounts uh, for the two-inch receiver, whether it's the four, six, eight, or ten-inch drops, are rated at twelve thousand five hundred pounds. Our two and a half-inch uh, receiver models are rated at eighteen thousand five hundred pounds, and our three-inch receiver models are rated at twenty-one thousand pounds. So, if I'm going to be towing several times a day or all day maxing out those ball mounts weight ratings well i might like to see steel because i have that confidence of that fatigue life that's going to take me to the grave uh, that's that honestly in my opinion is the only benefit that steel has over way safe so some of the benefits of the aluminum and why we've put our you know our money where our mouth is and why we've invested so heavily in getting our aluminum made in america ball mounts um, as expansive as they are is first and foremost um, it is a great metal the, the kind of aircraft grade aluminum we use is high strength. And it's why we're actually able to get the same weight ratings out of our aluminum ball mounts as we are out of our steel ball mount. Um, aluminum weighs half the amount. Our, our six inch drop aluminum for the two inch receiver weighs in at 16 pounds. Our steel equivalent with the same weight rating weighs in at 32 pounds. It is literally half the weight going with the aluminum. Aluminum's not going to oxidize on you. It's not going to corrode. It's not going to rust, which means if I'm going to spend $200 on a ball mount, whether it's steel or aluminum, that aluminum's going to look good on the back of my truck five, 10 years down the road, no matter how hard I'm working on it, versus a powder coated steel equivalent. Unfortunately, steel just oxidizes it, rusts, it flakes. And after, <laughs> after a couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of years, it's going to look pretty rough down the road. Um, other functions of aluminum that are, that are beautiful is it just keeps its finish a lot better. Um, both of our ball mounts, whether we use steel or aluminum, all of our tow balls are stainless steel, 
which means our toe balls aren't going to rust or flake on you. It's why we're able to get up to 21,000 pounds of weight rating out of our stainless steel, uh, our stainless steel toe balls just due to the high quality uh, materials that we're currently using. Additions to aluminum. Well, honestly, it's just between the weight, the strength, we use solid billet aluminum, solid billet aluminum. So what that means is there's no welds on our aluminum. It's a solid piece. We actually take tombstones of aluminum. We place it in a CNC mill here in Linden, Utah, and they're actually machined out of a solid piece, which means there's no weak points in our ball mounts. They're solid milled pieces versus steel is welded, whether you're buying some big name brand, whether you're buying a big name brand Waysafe or a B&W, whatever it might be, those welds tend to be uh, the weak points because right there is when you're relying on human error, right? Some oxidation problems versus on aluminum, it's a solid piece. So we can guarantee that quality throughout it. Chris, this has been such a great talk and getting to learn a little bit more about Waysafe. Now, as we come down to this, I want to talk a little bit about the warranty that Waysafe offers on their products. Can you talk a little bit about that? So all of our products, whether it's the with the gauge, without the gauge, the Waysafe ball mounts, the 180 hitch ball mounts, all of those come with the year standard warranty for manufacturer defects. All of our locks, um, so all of our ball mounts come standard with a dual pin lock. So we're the only ball mount manufacturer currently that is providing lock standard across all of our ball mounts, which means you don't have to pay an extra $20, $30 just to safeguard your ball mount from a, a thief walking by in the parking lot that thinks your ball mount looks nice and or or just wants to take it off the back of your truck and get five, six bucks from a recycling plant. We do come standard with locks and our locks do have a lifetime warranty, standard year warranty on the other ball mounts. The thing that sets the way safe apart is the gauge drive. So anywhere from the plunger that's in the drive to the hydraulic oil, that goes to the gauge, including the gauge itself, the whole gauge drive comes with a lifetime warranty. No problem, doesn't matter if it's a manufacturer defect or if one of your employees came up to it and hit it with a hammer, we cover that gauge for the lifetime of the ball mount, whether you're towing it for five years, 10 years, or 15 years, we will cover it. And if for some reason that ball mount, that gauge were to break, we'll, we'll cover it for you and we'll repair it for free. So the nice thing about our gauges is they are stainless steel construction. That coil spring in there is stainless steel, and it's actually designed to hold up to 3,500 pounds of tongue weight uh, before any defects would occur in it, which is actually <laughs> outrated any of our ball mounts by about a factor of two. So our, our gauges have a defect rate of well less than a percent. And this defect rate, it doesn't matter if it's a manufacturer defect or somebody taking a hammer to it, we have less than a percent. And that's how confident we are in these products. And that's how durable these gauges are. It doesn't matter if you've been using it for six months, or six years, if you're one of the first ones coming in and buying one of these way safe products, we have it completely covered for the life of the ball mount. That's incredible. And Chris, thank you so much. Is there any other features or any other things about Waysafe that you want to highlight before we bring this interview to a close? So the biggest recommendation for, for all of your subscribers and viewers and listeners out there is to check out our new True Toe weight distribution system that we released uh, the 1st of March. So the, the back order on it, it's a little large. It's, it's probably our most popular product release we have ever had in the industry. So this True Toe weight distribution system, there are several videos found at way-safe.com, W-E-I-G-H hyphen S-A-F-E.com. Um, showing this product. So it's the only weight distribution system on the market that not only does it tell you your tongue weight, it actually tells you how much weight you've distributed back to the front axle of your trailer. If you've never used a weight distribution before, <laughs> this might be a, a little above uh, your average viewer's head, um, but I, I highly recommend going to our website, checking out the videos. This weight distribution is industry changing. We're fully confident in the next 12 to 18 months it will be the most popular weight distribution system in the United States market. Um, and it's all assembled here in the United States of America. A great product for any of your listeners. Amazing, Chris. And thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. It was a pleasure to talk with you about Waysafe. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful day, Mike. It was good talking to you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. Visit us at howtohardscape.com for more information on trailer safety. Let us know what you want to learn about in future episodes by reaching out to us on our social channels. We are at How to Hardscape everywhere. And you can also send us an email, contact at howtohardscape.com. 
If you want to learn more about WaySafe, check them out at way-safe.com. We'd love it if you subscribe or to this podcast or leave us a review, a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. This really helps us get this podcast out there into more people's ears. And thank you so much for listening in each and every week. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardscape podcast.